The health minister has given the assurance that no Singaporean will drop out of MediShield Life because they can't pay the premiums. Mr Gan Kim Yong was wrapping up the debate on the scheme. In his speech, the health minister explained what the government is doing to keep medical costs down and premiums affordable. A key strategy is in fostering greater collective support, with the government saying it will raise healthcare spending from 33% to 40% or more. Patient co-payment is also an important safeguard, but beyond that, the government will work with providers and insurers to manage healthcare inflation. Still, MediShield Life premiums will be higher. There are three factors for this. Better benefits, bringing everyone into medical life, even those with pre-existing conditions, and spreading premiums more evenly throughout a person's lifetime. Several MPs have asked how the additional premium of 30% was decided for those with pre-existing conditions. Mr Gan said in fact those with pre-existing conditions would need to pay a lot more. But the recommendation was for a 30% additional premium so that it will not be overly onerous. The Ministry is currently reviewing the types of pre-existing medical conditions which will be subject to additional premiums and will share more details in time to come. Mr Gan said those in the working age groups will have to pay more to cushion the impact of future premium increases during their retirement years. It's different from what some have suggested, to cap premiums for the elderly and have flat premiums across all ages. Given our ageing population, this is not advisable as it entrenches an intergenerational cross-subsidy, where, where the young carries the burden to pay for the premiums of the old, with a growing number of elderly being supported by a shrinking number of younger pol policyholders, premiums of the younger generation will keep escalating, imposing an increasing burden on our children's generation. This will not be sustainable. And to ensure all will benefit, Mr Gunn clarified that premium subsidies for the lower to middle income groups, which cover up to two-thirds of the population, are a permanent feature. Such subsidies will be extended to target groups in as simple and convenient way as possible. Details on this will be released later. For those who are unable to afford their premiums after premium subsidies, the government will also provide additional premium support similar to how Medifund helps Singaporeans with medical expenses in the public health care institutions today. No Singaporeans will drop out of medical life because of inability to pay for premiums. Mr Gunn added that there will be no increase in taxes because of MediShield Life because the government has already budgeted for it. Now, having said that, he added that whether or not taxes will be raised in future will depend on the government's overall spending and revenue. Mr Gan also said MediShield life can be sustained in the long term if sufficient reserves are set aside. This is to honour current claims and future commitments such as premium rebates for older age groups. A sustainable insurance scheme needs to go beyond current year claims. Health Minister Gan Kim Yong said having adequate reserves will allow MediShield to honour long-term commitments, such as continuing claims for dialysis and cancer treatments, as well as premium rebates for older Singaporeans. Mr Gan also said it would not be responsible to exactly balance yearly payouts with MediShield's yearly premiums. We cannot consider only claims incurred in the current year. This looks only at current cash flow without considering the long-term claim liabilities, for example, for conditions which are already receiving payouts, leading to the misconception that MediShield is collecting more premiums than needed. Having adequate capital would also protect the insurance scheme against adverse situations, such as an unforeseen rise in claims or a sharp drop in investment returns. He referred to the Capital Adequacy Ratio, or CAR, which compares an insurance fund's financial resources with the capital it is required to hold by the authorities. The Monetary Authority of Singapore has set the minimum threshold of the CAR at 120 per cent. Below this would result in regulatory intervention. Mr Gunn said the MediShield Fund has targeted to maintain the CAR at 200 per cent, and this is in line with industry practice. He pointed out that during the 2008 financial crisis, the ratio fell to 148 per cent. Currently, the MediShield Fund's adequacy ratio is at 157 per cent. I'm keenly aware of the impact on premiums, but I would rather have sufficient reserves in MediShield life and provide the necessary premium support and subsidies. 
than to put Singaporeans' health care protection at risk. Turning to concerns about the capacity in public hospitals, if more people turn to subsidised care as a result of MediShield Life, Mr Gunn said there will be more bids with the opening of Ng Teng Fong General Hospital later this year. And if there is a shortage of subsidised beds, patients will be moved to higher bed classes if necessary and continue to pay subsidised rates.